this morning I want us to turn to the Bible in the book of First Peter, First Peter chapter 5. Let's just read a few scriptures there. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 7. First Peter 5, 7. The Bible says, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, amen. Who called, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Let me pray. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your presence. And for your anointing, Lord, as we continue this service and the coming service, manifest your power in the lives of each one of us. We thank you. The Lord, you are here by your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. So the Bible says, casting all your care upon him because he does what? He cares for you. We need to know, last Sunday we, I think I quoted Psalm 100. And verse 3 that, say, that says that, uh, let us know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has done what? Made us. And not we ourselves. We are the sheep of his pasture. So we need to know that we belong to God. Amen. The Bible says that we are bought at a precious, at a great cost. By the precious blood of Jesus. The blood of the lamb without blemish. When Jesus went to the cross, he paid it all for us. And we were redeemed. We were brought back to God from, from bondage, from slavery, from sin, from judgment, from condemnation. And now we are in Christ. And in Christ, we belong to God. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of Galatians chapter 3 and first, can we confirm it? Verse 28. Verse 28, 26. Okay, the scripture says that we are the children of, yeah. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Say, I am a child of God. Say, I belong to God. So now, if we belong to God, it means that our lives, God is concerned. Our waking up, our going out, our duties, our responsibilities, your family, your business, your job is God's business. He is concerned from A to Z. Whatever that concerns your life, concerns Jesus. The same book of Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16, verse 18 says, for we do not have a high priest who cannot be touched by our infirmities. Hebrews 4, 18. Hebrews 4, 18. says, for we do not have a high priest. Oh, I'm going to Hebrews 14. Eh? 15, 14. 15. Oh, 14, eight, 15, 14, 15. 15. Thank you, sorry. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. Verse 16 says, Let us therefore do what? Come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So Jesus is our high priest who is concerned about our infirmities, our weaknesses, our shortcomings, our needs. So the Bible says, casting your care upon him. Because he does what? He cares for you. Why does he care for you? Because you belong to him. Hallelujah. If it's your child and they're in trouble under normal circumstances, a normal parent, 
they will take care they will be concerned they want to know what can i do for, for my daughter or for my son they are crying or they have a need what can i do where can i go to get help for them and they go up and down to make sure that their children are settled and comfortable hallelujah and what jesus said in the book of matthew chapter 7 and verse 10 that if you are earthly fathers though they are wicked if they can give good gifts to you how much more you are heavenly father hallelujah verse 11 I always tell you, if it's not there, it's the next verse or the one below. So if it's not that, you just check the next verse, one or two verses. If you then being, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father say, God is my father? Say, God is my heavenly father. And how does God qualify to be your father? Because we are born of God. We are born of the spirit of God. The Bible says that which is born from above is spirit. And God is spirit. So we are born after the similitude of God. We are like him. Hallelujah. The Bible says that so are we in this world just like he is. Amen. So in this world just like God was with Christ and he walked with him and took care of him and gave him victory. He walks with us today, takes care of us and gives us victory. And so he says that our heavenly fathers, though they are evil, they do good things to their children. They have limitations sometimes. They may not be able, but they try to be sure, to make sure that all is well with their children. Our heavenly father is perfect. He is loving. He is caring. He is there with us always. Yes, there's nothing that can limit him from helping you. Because he is ever present. You may need something from your father or from your dad, earthly dad, but he is not around. He has traveled. But God never travels. Hallelujah. There may be a neighbor. The Bible says that, that he gives strength to the weary. He increases the power of the weak. Hallelujah. He strengthens the weary and increases those who have no power. He strengthens them with might. And so God can only do it because he's able and he is available. And so if they give good gifts to us, he says, how much more will your father who is in heaven give what kind of things? Good things to those who ask him. That is why prayer is very essential. Hallelujah. I've said it before that Prayer is an expression of our faith and confidence in God. Because even before we pray, God knows what we need. Hallelujah. And so, God has given us his spirit. We belong to him and so he is our father. Say, I belong to him and he takes care of me. Verse 8, we are in First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. It says, be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. That means the devil is our arch enemy. Your brother is not your enemy. The Bible says your enemy the devil. Not your enemy your mother. Not your enemy your husband. Not your enemy your neighbor. Pana. It's not your enemy your, your, enemy, your pastor. Apana. It's not your enemy the politician. No. These people, the people who do wrong things and oppress us and fight us and act like our enemies, it's only because they are vessels in somebody's hand. And if that hand is broken, then there will not be a problem to us. And the, that hand is the devil. So from today, I want us to walk in this life and look at life from the spiritual perspective. Our battle, the Bible says, is spiritual, it's not physical. And that's why God has given us spiritual weapons. For we don't struggle against flesh and blood. We don't struggle with human beings. We don't struggle, we don't fight. Our battle, our fight is not against things that we can see. 
they are only used by the devil as agents. The Bible says, your enemy, your brother. Your enemy, the governor. Your enemy, the president. Your enemy, your neighbor. Does it say so? No. It says your enemy, the devil. So who are we supposed to fight against? Is the devil. So that means because our enemy is spiritual, we have to use spiritual weapons to counter him and to fight him. No wonder the Bible tells us to put on the full armor of God and resist the devil. Amen. First 8, verse 9 says, what? Resist him. Do what? Resist him. How? Stand fast in your faith. How do we get faith? How do we gain faith? How do we build faith? Through the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God because the devil will always use what is contrary to the word of God. His voice is always contrary to the voice of God. Remember when he went to tempt Jesus? He used the Bible. Is it not so? But he used it contrary. He used it on the negative. He wondered where Jesus is promised care and protection by God. He wanted Jesus to tempt God. And he said it is written that I shall not tempt the Lord you are. You are God. And when he wanted him to because he wanted to gain access to Jesus to subject him to his mastery. To become his master and Lord. And by making Jesus obey him rather than obeying who? God. And he tells him if you are the son of God turn the stones into bread. And Jesus said that that uh, it is written, man shall not do what? Live by bread alone. Because he wanted Jesus to cast doubt on his identity. Because he is hungry. The fact that you have a need, you still, you still remain a child of God. When in the time of trouble, in need, when you are hungry, when you have not paid your house rent, you are still born again. You are still saved. Hallelujah. That does not change your identity. I came to say your circumstance today cannot change who you are. Hallelujah. The fact that Jesus is hungry and he needs food and there is no food around does not mean that God is not powerful. It doesn't mean that God does not care. It doesn't mean that God does not love him. God still loves you even when, when you're in need. God still cares for you even when you're in pain. Hallelujah. He is still God no matter what happens. Nothing can change who God is in your life. Shendrak, Meshach, and Abednego, they said, live long, O king, but let it be known to you that we will not worship your idol. Because in their hearts, they held God as supreme. They knew that God, whether he saves them or not, he still remains God. Hallelujah. He still remains powerful. He still remains mighty. He still remains loving. And I came to tell you this morning, resist the devil. Hallelujah. And so, the devil knowing that because of ignorance and little knowledge sometimes in people, he makes them think that it's this brother, it is your wife, it is your mother-in-law who is your enemy. And so they go to the witch doctors and they are told, oh, the one who is bewitching you, the one who is destroying your child is your next door neighbor. Because of lack of knowledge that our enemy is not that person you see. Your enemy is the devil. And the devil knows that if you chase and fight the wrong object or the wrong, the wrong enemy, you miss the battle. Rather you lose the battle. We are not going to lose our battles. Because we know who the enemy is. Hallelujah. We shall take the weapons of our warfare. Hallelujah. The shield of faith. The word of God. The helmet of salvation. The belt of truth. The shoes of the renders of the gospel of peace. Hallelujah. And praying for, with all kinds of prayers. And supplication. Praying for one another. So that God can show himself mighty on our behalf. Hallelujah. So your enemy is not your mother. Your enemy is not your boss. Chase the right enemy. Deal with the right enemy. Fight the right enemy. And when you conquer up there, you shall see change here. 
Hallelujah. Even in our situation, the situation in our nation today, it is spiritual. Coronavirus is a spirit. Anything that causes pain and suffering and death is a spirit. And that is the category of coronavirus. So that is why we need to pray. They are looking for vaccines. They want to give you a vaccine so that they can stop the, the virus or the spread or the infection. Whatever it is, let the government do what they should do because it's their responsibility to provide health care and all the other things. But we know this is something beyond what you can see. We know there is a spirit behind it. And every day you should stand up, dress up yourself, your spirit, and stand firm and tell the devil you have no power. Coronavirus, you are broken in the name of Jesus. Divine health is my portion. For by the stripes of Jesus we are healed. The God who heals cancer can heal corona. The God who heals fever can heal corona. He can eradicate the disease in your body. And so you need, you need to stand firm and stand by the word of God and resist the devil by what the Bible says. We don't go by what people say. No. We go by what the Bible says. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that we are healed. That Jesus carried our infirmities. He said it is finished. He conquered the enemy forever. And our victory is settled in heaven forever. Hallelujah. Verse 10 says, But may the God of all grace, God of grace, we approach the throne of grace. Jesus came and brought grace. Hallelujah. The Bible says the Lord came by Moses, but grace came by Jesus. He is the very grace of God. Amen. He says, and the God of what? May the God of all grace. That means you cannot have God and not have grace in your life. Give us Ephesians 4, 7. Say, I carry grace. Say, I'm a carrier of God's grace. But to each one of us, say, I'm included. To each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Grace has been given to you as a mother. Grace has been given to you as a business person. Grace has been given to you as a preacher. Grace has been given to you as a husband. Grace has been given to you as an officer. Wherever and what, wherever you are, grace has been given to each one of us. Because we have Christ in our lives, we carry the grace of God. You cannot have Christ and you don't have grace. Don't be lied to by anybody. This is the Bible. I don't care what who says what. To each of us, to each one of us, are you excluded? And where and how was that grace given? In Christ. Hallelujah. If you are in Christ, unless you are outside Christ, kama uko kando na inchi ya Yesu, neema auna. Lakini kama uko ndani, sema ni kondani. Mana sifiwe sana. The Bible says that to those who, um, who did what? Those who are in Christ. Uh -huh. If anyone be in Christ. If anyone be in Christ. Hallelujah. So the package of those who are in Christ. In that package, grace is, in, is included. Say, I carry grace. That is why you can be a blessing because you carry grace. Everybody and anybody who has, who has grace is a blessing. That is why Jesus is a blessing. The Bible says God has blessed us. He sent his son Jesus to bless us by turning us away from our sins. And salvation is where the great operation of God's grace begins. Once you receive Jesus, hallelujah. Can I read that scripture for you? Acts chapter 2 verse 29, let me go. Hallelujah. Say, I carry grace. Say, I have grace to take me through. Um, I've said chapter what? Chapter 3, sorry. Acts chapter 3, verse 26. Acts 3, 26 says what? 
Do you first God having raised up his servant Jesus, send him to bless you. Say I'm blessed. In turning away every one of you from your iniquities. So salvation, salvation, forgiveness of sins is a blessing. And you cannot be blessed without grace. Because it is Jesus who brought grace. Who carries the grace of God. The grace of redemption. The grace of salvation. The grace of forgiveness. He is the one that has come into our hearts. And so because I have Jesus, I have grace. And I am blessed. So, say I am a carrier of grace. And I am infused with God's blessings. I am full of God's blessings. I can give you many scriptures, because, but because of time, let's finish what we are saying. So, he is the God of all grace. Say, I carry all grace. That means grace in diversities. And to each one of us, grace has been given according to Christ's gift. So, each one of us has a special grace. There are some times when we can share graces, but there are some times when you can have your special grace. And that is why you, we need each other. But there are some certain areas I have grace you don't have. And there are other areas you have grace I don't have. So I need you to compliment me. You need me to compliment you. And that's how the church, the Bible says, as each part doing its work, the body is built. As each one contributing their grace, coming with what they carry, and making it, putting it together, as we do that, the body of Christ gets stronger and stronger. It's joined together. Hallelujah. And we are undefeatable. And that is what the devil is fearing. That's why he wants to scatter us. So that you are alone there and I'm alone there. Na yule mwingine ya kupanda ile peke yake. So that the time I need the grace that you carry, I don't have it. I don't get it. But that devil is a liar. He is defeated in Jesus name. We shall all together by God's grace. That same grace may, shall make a provision for us to gather together. Like we are today. So that anytime you need what I carry, you can have it. And anytime I need what you carry, I can access it. But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Amen. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. That means your suffering, your trouble, your setbacks are only for a while. They are not forever. Hallelujah. Nothing that is contrary to your life in this life is permanent. It's only temporal. Even life itself in this world is temporal. That's why Psalm 30 verse 5, he says that, that his anchor is only for a while. Psalm 35. But he says his favor is for lifetime. For his anger is only for a moment. But his favor is for what? For life, the grace of God. That we've talked about his favor. His goodness is for life. Hallelujah. He's a member of this party for, for life. Have you heard people say that? For life. I'm a member for life. Is it not so? They are not getting out of that. Is it not so? They are there to do what? To stay. So that means that the favor of God upon your life is there to stay. Hallelujah. Psalm chapter Psalm chapter 5 and verse 12. We're coming back again here to finish this scripture. Then we pray. Psalm 5, 12 says, For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous with the favor. You will surround him as with a shield. You are not surrounded by evil. You are not surrounded by witchcraft. You are not surrounded by failure. You are not surrounded by poverty. You are surrounded by favor. You are surrounded by blessings. You are surrounded by glory. You are surrounded by blessings. Hallelujah. See, I am surrounded. See, I am favored. See, the favor of God upon my life is for life. 
Hallelujah. The God of your salvation. The God of your life. Has surrounded you with favor. As with a shield. That means the favor of God cannot be penetrated. Are you getting that? As a shield. The favor of God. Yani hakuna kitu kingine. Ambacho kitaonekana maishani mwako. Na ukiona kitu kingine ambacho kinakaa kifanani na favor. Kataa. Say I refuse it in Jesus name. Disappointment I refuse in Jesus name. Anxiety I refuse in Jesus name. Failure I refuse in Jesus name. I cannot be the tail I am the head. I can never be beneath I am above. I am not cast and blessed. Hallelujah. I am the beloved of the Lord. I am a child of God. Anything that once in ataka kukaa kukufanya ukae kama wewe si wa Mungu kataa. Wewe ni wa Mungu. Na umebarikiwa. Na una kibali. Kibali kimekuzunguka. Let's go back to 35 then we finish. 35 35 Psalm 30 verse 5. So that favor is for life. Then he says weeping may do what? Weeping may remain, crying, suffering may remain for Remember what Peter said, after you have suffered a little while, the God of glory, he himself will come and restore you, strengthen you, make you perfect. Hallelujah. He says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I declare your morning of joy is here. I declare your morning of elevation is here. I declare your morning of breakthrough is here. Hallelujah. Crying and weeping and suffering may remain for a night. Pain. You are sick somewhere in your body. It's not, it's not permanent. It's temporal. I declare it's temporal. You are coming out of it in Jesus name. By the hand of God. The hand of deliverance. God is bringing you out. And you shall glorify his name. That's why first 10 says. First 10 says. Uh, sorry first 11. To him be what? Glory and the dominion forever and our God is forever glorified. Our God is still reigning. He is still, he is still, he is still on the throne. He is dominating every situation in your life. And if God be for us, who can be against us? If God be for us, we are more than conquerors. We are on the winning side. Hallelujah. So church, let's be encouraged. Let's face our tomorrow and our future with confidence. Hallelujah. A believer is someone who is supposed to give life to encourage others. A believer, someone who knows the Lord. They are walking in the light. They are not disadvantaged in any way. And so there is something to give to the world. Remember Peter says to this crippled man, silver and gold I have not. But such as I have, I give unto you. I want you to know that you carry things the world cannot afford to have. We carry a, we carry a treasure that the world is looking for. Let us go dishing it out. Let us be distributors. Hallelujah. Of God's grace, God's goodness. And tell the people there is hope in Christ. There is hope in Christ. And so this morning as you face this day, this week, this month, and the rest of this year, be full of confidence. Walk with boldness. The righteous are always bold. Because they know something. Say, I know something. Say, I know something. Hallelujah. And that thing that you know will cause you to keep moving in every situation. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's pray. Let's pray. If you are sick or you have any need, just raise your right hand. You need, you have a need, financial, physical, family, personal, spiritual, whatever it is. Just raise your right hand as a sign of faith in God. Father, we believe you today according to your word. The Lord, victory is ours in Christ Jesus. We thank you because you are the God of all grace. You have given us grace in every area of our lives. And I declare that every need represented by those hands, whether physical, whether it's pain in the body, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I declare by the stripes of Jesus we are healed. No disease, no infection shall prevail. No cancer, no diabetes, no stomach pain. Wherever you are, I rebuke you. I dissolve you in the mighty name of Jesus. 
I declare divine health is your portion. God our provider and our shepherd. If it's financial need, silver and gold belongs to your father. Lord, I declare mighty breakthrough, financial freedom, financial breakthrough upon every brother and sister in their marriage, in their lives. Whatever they have been struggling with the father from today, they shall see the hand of God in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare mighty breakthrough and victory to the glory of your name, Father. Come through for them, for their children, for their jobs, oh Lord, for their loved ones, even those who are not born again, I declare salvation in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, meet each one of these brothers and sisters at the very point of their need, according to our riches and glory, and our praise and our honor and glory be to you, Lord. We worship and we thank you for gathering us again today to worship you, Lord. We declare it is well according to your word. Receive all the honor and all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Twice a month.